Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. So here, prerequisites are mathematics you need to perfect and next to basic electrical engineering you need to perfect. In the mathematics, you need to perfect with the differential equations and Laplace transforms. In the basic electrical engineering, you need to know the network reduction techniques and KCL, KVL, nodal analysis, mesh analysis you need to perfect. And what are the objectives of the electrical circuit analysis means you need to be, you can know by means of this one, magnetic circuits and a network topology. So in general, you know the electric field will be forming by means of charge here also it will be charged but it is moving if the charge is moving then automatically magnetic field will be formed then coming to our network topology different types of networks will be there we will come to know that networks and three phase circuits and transients of course the supply will be a single phase or three phase in this uh, um, in this class uh, in this uh, ACA we will discuss about the three phase circuits and transients what is there will be of the some disturbances when you are switch on and off position to the that means uh, where the current is coming from the source at a time and end at a time so that's why there may be a transients will be there so that uh, that will be also discussed in the ECA and next network parameters so network parameters means here z parameters and y parameters of course these can be called as the impedance parameters admittance parameters and um, transmission parameters also we will discuss next course outcomes so what are the course outcomes means here network theorems and transient and steady state response sinusoidal steady state circuits and two port network behavior in the network theorems uh, whatever whatever may be the complex network uh, that can be reduced by using network reduction techniques uh, but in order to simplify uh, in order to simplify still further complex network so we will take the help of the network theorems uh, that means uh, next one is a tangent and steady state response the in general the response will be of two types that is a tangent and a steady state response that is switch is on and switch is off position we will get the responses and next to science and steady state circuits the science or steady state circuit means um, if the input is a sine sine waveform then it will be called as the science or steady state circuit and its two port network means the uh, jet parameters y parameters and the uh, transmission parameters and h parameters we will discuss so, so coming to network theorems so in general why should we go for this network theorems means um, all the network reduction techniques kcl kvl and mesh analysis nodal analysis all will be applicable for lump networks if this network is uh, distributed then we can take the help of the that means if the network is uh, distributed then all these network reduction techniques are not sufficient to solve that problem so that's why we will take the help of the network theorems in order to reduce all the distributed network complexity into the simplicity form Okay, so that's why we are going for this network theorems. So that is the importance of our network theorems. In this network theorems, we are going to discuss superposition theorem, Thevenin's theorem, and Norton's theorem, and maximum power transfer theorem, reciprocity theorem, and compensation theorem. Of course, all the theorems you need to remember. First of all, the theorem statement, and there will be of the corresponding one problem will be there. If you understand the theorem statement, the application of the theorem for the problem is very very important. So next one is duality. Duality is not a theorem, okay. And what is mean by is we will tell in the next classes. So coming to some basics of the network elements. Before going to all the theorems, so first of all we need to know the network basic network elements. So basic network elements are simply linear and non-linear elements, and active and passive elements, and bilateral and unilateral elements and time variant and time invariant elements that means all these elements can be classified into four types so first of all what are those elements are known as uh, in which way explained we'll see now so linear element in the linear and nonlinear elements first we need to know what is meant by linear element an element is said to be linear okay an element is said to be linear whose VI characteristics follow only one equation and it should and a straight line passing through the origin for all the time otherwise non-linear here you need to remember the definition of the linear element an element is said to be linear whose VA characteristics follows only that means it should follow only one equation and it is a straight line passing through the origin at all the time otherwise non-linear 
so what are the what is mean by that one means here by means of example we will see here so in the case of the this one first one is in the first one you can observe that here this equation this first one first one here you are observing in this one the like this he has given that means here it is having the only one equation in which way you are uh, telling only one equation means it is not deviating its path so that's why we can say that it is having the only one path and next what is the second condition uh, that means it is a straight line okay and what is the second condition it should be passing through the origin compulsory it should pass through the origin so that's why the second condition also be satisfied so coming to the first one what is the first one it is satisfying the both conditions so that's why it is a linear what are the conditions first of all it should it should be a straight line which and the next second one is it should be passed through the origin that is the first condition and the next one is second one second one what is the second one here second one is like this okay second one is coming to the second one here also second one the same as it is of the previous case but here it is like this that means it is also having the straight line that first equation a first condition it has been satisfied and next it is passing through the it is also passing through the origin okay it is also passing through the origin and it will be also having the one equation in which way we are saying the one equation it is not deviating path it is not deviating its path it is directly from here to here it is coming so that's why we are saying it will be having the one equation so this is uh, the second one is also linear and the next one is third one third one you can observe by means of this one by means of diagram if you observe here third one is third one here it is also a straight line that means the first condition it is satisfying but here you can observe what about the second condition the second if you observe the second condition it is touching at the origin but it is not passing through the origin so that's why the second condition has not been satisfying so that's why this can be non linear and in next third one what is the third one in the third one you can observe here it uh, it will be having the deviating path okay it will be having the deviating path deviating path that means here it will be having the two paths okay it will be having the two paths so this is the first one and this is the second one so that's why it is not having the only one equation so first condition has not been satisfied what about the second condition it should be passing through the origin but it is not passing through the origin it has touched the origin and it is again going so that's why the second condition also not satisfied so that's why this can also be non linear so this is these are the basic examples of the these are the basic examples of the uh, linear and non linear characteristics something and in this one here also you can observe the fifth one you can observe fifth one up to this case okay up to this case it is the straight line that means it is uh, it is satisfying the first condition but after that it is taking the constant line so that's why the first condition has not been satisfied and whatever the second condition it should be passing through the zero uh, uh, that means origin it should be passing through the origin it is passing through the origin but the first condition not satisfied so that's why this can be taken as non linear and next sixth one sixth one uh, here also it will be having the one equation uh, satisfying the first condition whatever the second condition it should be passing through the zero but it is not passing through the zero so that's why the second condition has not been satisfied so that's why here also it is also non linear and i should what about the third condition what about the third condition here you can observe uh, sorry here you can observe the seventh one seventh one the line is drawn like this so that's why it will be having the only one equation that first condition has been satisfied what about the second condition second condition has not been satisfied why because what is, it is not passing through the origin so that's why here it is also non linear and the next one is here one more thing eighth one what about the eighth one here it is having the it is having the one equation okay it is having the one equation 
okay of course it is having the one equation but what about the second condition it is not passing through the origin so that's why here this also non linear and next the ninth one coming to the ninth one here it will be having the one equation here it is having the one equation you can observe it will be having the one equation it have it will be having the one equation but what about the second condition it should be passing through the zero or origin but it is not passing through the origin so that's why second condition has not been satisfied so that's why this will be also non linear and next the last one is okay and next last one is here the tenth one what about the tenth one here you can easily observe by means of this one it is a straight line okay up to this is it is a straight line which is passing through the origin if you take like this it will be a linear but it is deviating its path in the positive direction and it is deviating its path in the negative direction so that's why here it is also a non linear okay these are the basic examples for our linear and non linear elements and coming to active and passive elements so coming to active and passive elements what is mean by active element active element which delivers net amount of the power okay active element which delivers net active amount of the power here uh, p double time the active element is which delivers net amount of the power to the circuit otherwise it is passive so that is a basic definition but by means of seeing the va characteristics in which way we can see now means here the first one based upon the first one you can see here it is having the you can observe assume that this is the positive direction assume that this is the positive direction then if you take this q1 okay assume that this is the q1 quadrant assume that this is the q2 quadrant q3 quadrant and next q4 quadrant so if you are taking the quadrants like that okay if you are taking the quadrants like that then automatically here this is the positive direction and this is also positive direction if you take the ratio of the voltage to the current or if you take the uh, if you take the impedance value okay if you take the impedance value then what will happen here the ratio of the positive term to the positive term okay here also it is positive in the numerator here also it is positive in the denominator so that's why it it will be total what you can get here it will be positive and in the first quadrant that means in the q1 quadrant it is positive okay in the q1 quadrant it is positive but what about the this quadrant okay what about the this quadrant here it is negative and of course here also it is negative that means a negative divided by negative okay negative divided by negative what you can get simply you can get the positive so that's why here also in the q1 q3 here this quadrant is q3 in the q3 quadrant also it is positive that means q1 quadrant is positive and q3 quadrant is also positive if the both quadrant are positive okay if the both quadrants are positive then it can be said to be passive element okay please be remember that it can be said to be passive element if the both quadrants are pa pa both quadrants are positive then it can be said to be passive element that means so first one is passive element okay first one is passive element and then what about the second one here you can observe the second one here uh, in the direction it is a positive in the direction it is a negative that means a positive divided by negative it will become negative and of course it is having the positive direction it is having the negative it will be also negative so that's why here total is negative if the total is negative then what that becomes here it is nothing but active element okay if the slope is negative if the slope is positive then automatically it is passive elements if the slope is negative if the slope is negative then automatically it will be the active please be remember this one and next coming to this one here also you can observe this is positive this direction and this is also positive and next if the both directions are positive then you can consider this as a passive element and of course this will be the negative and this will be the negative so negative divided by negative so you can get the positive so that's why this element can also be passive 
that means except the second one the remaining all are getting the positive slopes if you are getting the positive slope then it will be the passive element if you are getting the negative element then it will be the active element once again i am repeating if you are getting the positive uh, slope then it will be the passive if you are getting the negative slope then it will be the active or otherwise in simple words you can remember if the element is uh, placing in the first quadrant and third quadrant if the element is first quadrant and third quadrant it is relating to the passive element if the element is placed in the second and fourth quadrant then it is the active element otherwise these two cases suppose if the element is placing in 1 2 or uh, 3 4 then automatically that element will be belongs to the active element please be remember this concept and the next one so bilateral and unilateral element what is meant by bilateral and unilateral element mean here bilateral means which offers same impedance here you can correct this one here it is same impedance bilateral means which offers same impedance when the direction or polarity of the voltage or current get reversed otherwise unilateral that means you can take the first example what is the first example here you can observe in the positive direction what is the impedance if you take plus 4 volts divided by plus 4 amperes then that will be is equal to 1 ohm in the positive direction and next what about the negative direction next uh, next quadrant here you can observe 4 volts minus 4 volts divided by minus 4 amperes you can uh, here also you can get 1 ohm that means if the this element this element is offering the same impedance same impedance in the both directions same impedance in the both directions then it will be called as a bilateral element so please remember that one for the case of the second one for the case of the second one, 8 volts plus 8 volts divided by plus 4 amperes is equal to 2 ohms is the impedance. And next, minus 6 volts divided by minus 4 amperes is equal to 3 by 2 ohms. Okay, 3 by 2 ohms. That means here also, here you are not getting the same impedance. Bilateral elements means which offer same impedance, which offer same impedance, then it will be the bilateral impedance. If it is not offering the same impedance, then it is automatically unilateral element. Please remember this concept. Next one. Time variant element. Time variant and time invariant element means, means where VA characteristics change with respect to the time. Otherwise, it is time invariant. Time variant means here, assume that this is the first one, uh, first T1 is assume that uh, uh, you can take the as time is changing, the VA characteristics also changing. Okay as time is changing the VA characteristics also changing so that's why T1 can be considered as a time variant uh, so as the time T2 is changing but VA characteristics are not changing so that's why it is nothing but time invariant characteristics these are the basic example for the time variant and time invariant and next one more uh, basic one is uh, KCL what do you mean by KCL? KCL means algebraic sum of the currents at a particular node is equal to the 0 suppose here in this case if you are taking the I1 and I4 okay I1 and I4 you are taking those are the incoming currents I2 and I5 are the outgoing currents then automatically algebraic sum of the currents at the particular node that means at the node this point is equal to 0 I1 plus I4 minus I2 minus I5 is equal to 0 that is the KCL already we have discussed in our basics and what are the features of the KCL features of the KCL means here this KCL can be applicable for the any lump network any lump network means it is a small network in simple words you can call it can be called as a small network uh, that means more uh, more terms are not there uh, that is if a distributed network means uh, if there is uh, there are the more number of the shunt arms then it will be the distributed network that means here this kcl can be applicable for only lump network and of course independent of the nature of the element which is nothing but either you can take a resistor or inductor or capacitor you can take and next here this can be applicable on the based on the law of conservation of the charge please be remember that this can be uh, based on the law of conservation of charge and the next one is KVL. 
in the case of the kvl in any lumped network the algebraic sum of the branch voltage around a closed loop is equal to the zero that means if you are taking a r1 r2 r3 okay if you are taking r1 r2 and r3 both r are the three resistors then uh, current is equal to i then whatever the voltage drops vr1 vr2 vr3 are the voltage drops then according to the theorem total voltage v is equal to vr1 plus vr2 plus vr3 you can observe here in this diagram already we have discussed this in our basics in basic electrical engineering next features of kvl what are the features of kvl this features of the kvl this kvl can be applicable for any lump network that means just like kcl here also this kvl can be applicable for any lump network and it is of the independent of the nature of the element either it may be a resistor inductor capacitor it can also be applicable and next based on the law of conservation of energy whereas your kcl based on the law of conservation of charge but here voltage can be kvl can be based on the law of conservation of energy and next coming to conclusion here if kcl plus ohms law if you are taking the kcl and ohms law in combination then it can be called as a nodal analysis that means in the nodal analysis you are going to apply both theorems kcl and ohms law in the mesh analysis you are going to apply both theorems kvl and ohms law kvl plus ohms law can be called as mesh analysis kcl plus ohms law can be called as nodal analysis coming to the one more basic thing is uh, series connection this series connection is nothing but if Z1 and Z2, if Z1 and Z2 are the two impedances, then what is meant by series connection? The second to terminal of the first one is going to connect to the first terminal of the second one. So first to terminal, uh, second to terminal of the uh, second one is going to the first terminal of the first one. Then automatically this connection can be called as the series connection. So that's why total impedance is equal to Z is equal to Z1 plus Z2. Okay. And next there is a series connection. If there is there are a two resistors, then automatically you can take Z1 plus Z2. If the n number of resistors are n number of impedances, Z1 plus Z2 plus 1, Zn you can take. And next parallel connection. In the case of the parallel connection, what is the parallel connection? If all the positive terminals are connected at one side, if all the negative terminals are connected at one side, then it can be called as the parallel connection. Then automatically, what is the formula? Z1, Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2. From where it is coming? 1 by Z is equal to 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2. You can get. Of course, if you are taking the sum m number of turns, 1 by Z is equal to 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2 plus 1 up to 1 by Zn. You will consider. And next, before going to the theorem okay before going to the theorem superposition theorem we need to know one more thing that is the principle of homogeneity okay principle of homogeneity what in by principle of homogeneity means in any linear network okay in any linear network if the excitation is multiplied by if the excitation is multiplied by constant k then the response in any branches are multiplied by k so what do you mean by this one we will see now that means once again I am repeating in a linear network if the excitation is multiplied by constant k then the response in any branches are multiplied by k. Here you can observe in this diagram. Okay, Here you can observe in this diagram what you can observe here in here by means of observing this diagram. Here voltage source he has given 4 volts and next 2 ohms resistor and 4 ohms resistor 2 are connected in parallel. So what is mean by total? What is the total current here? Total current he has given in the problem itself one ampere. That one ampere at this case it has been reduced into half ampere, half ampere for these two resistors. And this can be equivalent to the okay. This can be equivalent to the if you are multiplying this source okay. If you are multiplying this source by four volts, that means I am taking here k is equal to four. Okay, if you are multiplying that k is equal to 4, that means 4 multiplied by 4, that can be taken as 16. And if the voltage source has been come like that, then automatically responses will be also multiplied by 4, which is nothing but here, this 1 ampere is multiplied by 4 amperes. Okay, 1 ampere can be, 1 ampere can be multiplied by 4 amperes, so that's why 1 into 4. 
and next year half ampere can be multiplied by half into 4 that you can uh, observe 2 amperes you can get and this half ampere also can be multiplied by 4 amperes then it you can get 2 amperes this is the principle of homogeneity so that means here if the excitation has been multiplied by a constant k then automatically response in any branches can also be multiplied by k this, are the, this is the principle of homogeneity, first example. And the second example here also, you can observe that in this example, what you can observe that here, uh, by means of, you need to find out in this, in this problem, you need to find out I1 and I2 by means of principle of homogeneity. What is the homogeneity principle? If, by means of homogeneity, you need to find out this one. So here, the excitation is 10 volts. So, if the 10 excitation volts has been uh, multiplied by uh, 40, that means uh, 10 has become 40, so that's why it is be, uh, mean multiplied by 4. So that's why you can simply remember that here, it has been multiplied by uh, 4, then automatically it becomes 40 volts. 10 volts has been multiplied by 4 volts is equal to the uh, 40 volts it has become. And then after that, that means it is the excitation what about the responses you need to get so responses you need to get means for the, for the first circuit if you observe for the first circuit the incoming current is equal to 4 amperes outgoing current is equal to 2 amperes that means you need to find out the i1 value according to the principle of homogeneity what is the principle of homo according to principle of homogeneity you need to multiply by the k value what is the k value here k is equal to 4 here you can observe so by means of multiplying this 4 multiplied by 4 automatically you can get 16 amperes and next to this 2 amperes multiplied by 4 uh, 4 is equal to 8 amperes you can get this is the one uh, so that's why what so that's why what is the answer answer is equal to i1 is equal to you can get 16 amperes i2 is equal to you can get 8 amperes I1 is equal to 16 amperes, I2 is equal to 8 amperes by means of our homogeneity principle. And next coming to superposition theorem. Okay, so coming to superposition theorem. In any linear bilateral network, of course bilateral also you can take, okay. Uh, in any linear bilateral network containing two or more sources, the response in any element is equal to the algebraic sum of the responses caused by individual sources acting alone, while the other sources are non-operative. That is, while considering the effect of the individual sources, other ideal voltage sources and other ideal current sources in the network are replaced by short circuit and open circuit across the terminal zone. In this case, to find out the current through the branch of the 3 ohm resistor, you are going to find out. What is the theorem? According to theorem, first you need to find out the response in that branch due to the one, uh, one active source. One active source is nothing but so uh, the response in any element is equal to the, the algebraic sum of the responses caused by individual sources acting alone. That means algebraic sum of the responses caused by individual sources means here 120 volts should be act one side. Okay, 20 volts should be act one side and next 5 amperes should be one side. So that's why here we are taking that as a case 1 and case 2. Assume that in the case 1, 20 volts source activated and 5 ohm source deactivated, then you will get some current is equal to 3 in the 3 amperes. And next in the case 2, assume that here 5 amperes is active, uh, active and next to 20 volts is deactivated, then also you can get the current. And next here, superposition theorem, when the both sources are acting individual, we will see now. So first case 1, okay, in the case 1, what you can observe here means, in the case one, if the 20 voltage source has been activated, then automatically the sources, voltage source here, you can remember that voltage source will be short circuited and the current source should be open circuited. For this case, voltage source has been shorted, that means 20 voltage source has been shorted, which is deactivating, but for current source has been activated, well, according to current division principle, you require the current through I3, that means I through 3 ohms you require. I3 is equal to, you require, I3 is equal to total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance is the formula. But uh, the, what is the total current here? Here the total current is equal to 5 amperes. That 5 amperes multiplied by, what is the opposite resistance? Opposite resistance is equal to 5 ohms. And 5 ohm divided by 5 plus 3, you can get I1 is equal to 3.125 amperes is the current you can get in the case of case 1. Coming to the case 2. 
in the case 2 if the voltage source has been uh, deactivated voltage source is uh, activated but current source has been deactivated then automatically what is mean by current source has been deactivated which should be open okay voltage source R should be short circuited current source should be open circuited now so that's why here by means of 20 voltage source here you are going to find out the current through the uh, 3 ohm resistor what is the I2? I2 is equal to here automatically this 10 ohm resistor will be nullified. So that's why I2 is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance that will be is equal to 20 volts divided by 5 plus 3 ohms is equal to 2.5 amperes you can get. That is the case to current. And in the case 3, what is, what is the case 3? The algebraic sum of the currents caused by individual sources acting alone. So that's why what are the algebraic sum of the currents? 2.5 plus 3.125 which you can get 5.625 amperes you can get. That is the first problem. So here for the problem in which way we have to do C now. So if the 6 voltage source has been activated, then 3 amp source act being deactivated means it should be open circuited. Then that will be I is equal to voltage divided by uh, total resistance. I is equal to 0.5 amperes. That means in the case 1, I4 dash is equal to 0.5 amperes you will get. Coming to the second case, if the 3 amperes source has been activated, 6 voltage source has been deactivated, which is nothing but voltage source should be short circuited, then automatically I4 double dash is equal to here what you can get total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance you can take what is the opposite resistance 8 ohm divided by 8 plus 4 then automatically it is 2 amperes if you what is the case 3 the algebraic sum you need to take algebraic sum is equal to 0.5 plus 2 is equal to 2.5 amperes you can so for the next problem to find out the current through the branch of the 3 ohm resistor here he has given that to 20 voltage source and 15 voltage source and of course uh, 5 ohm resistor, 10 ohm resistor, 3 ohm resistor he has given you need to find out the current through the 3 ohm resistor that means you need to apply case 1, case 2, case 3 in the case 1 20 voltage source can be activated and in the case 2 15 voltage source can be activated in the case 3 you need to uh, sum the two currents first case if the 20 voltage source has been activated what will happen if the 20 voltage source has been activated 15 voltage source can be deactivated then what is the i3 i3 is equal to total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance what is the total current total current is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance but you don't know the total resistance now the total resistance is equal to this 3 amps 3 ohm and 10 ohm are connected in parallel that will be connected with 5 ohm uh, and total current is equal to 2.739 amperes divided uh, 2.739 amperes and what is the i3 value i3 is equal to total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance which is nothing but 2.739 into 10 divided by 13 that will be is equal to 2.10 amperes next case and in the case 2 15 voltage source is activated and 20 voltage source has been deactivated then it is activating uh, deactivating means simply it will be uh, replaced by uh, short circuit so i3 is equal to total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance but you don't know the value of it so that's why it is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance it is equal to 15 volts divided by 5 is in parallel with 3 plus 10 it is equal to 15 divided by 11.87 that will be is equal to 1.26 amperes you can get and it's by means of uh, current that means total current passing through the three ohm resistor is equal to 2.10 plus 0.78 that you can get 2.88 amperes you can get and in the next one is find out the current through the following circuit by using superposition theorem same theorem we are applying 50 volt source be, has been activated and 25 volts has been uh, activated uh, so here also uh, that means the case 1 what is the case 1 and the 50 voltage source act activated then I3 is equal to total current multiplied by opposite resistance divided by total resistance so IT is equal to total current is equal to uh, total voltage divided by total resistance you can get 4.21 amperes and next I3 is equal to this much and next one case 2 case 2 current is uh, here also case 2 current is uh, like this so 25 volts source activated and 50 voltage source deactivated then it is equal to something you can get by means of here i3 by means of this one i3 dash is equal to 2.63 amps by combining these two 2.63 plus 2.63 okay here you uh, you can uh, replace plus 2.63 plus 2.63 5.26 amps those are the problems of the super based on the superposition theorem